Welcome to Success After Lockdown. It goes another episode here. Um, today we're here to talk to three amazing women who have formally changed their life around. Uh, we're about to introduce you in a second, but again, I'm Anthony Colon. I'm your host and my brother to my left is Eric uh, Benson, um, who has been the vision behind the podcast and Success After Lockdown and what it is that we do here. Um, Eric, want to tell us what's our mission statement? So, what is so, it that we do? so uh, success after lockdown actually entails um, highlighting, you know, the formerly incarcerated men and women, you know, that's uh, that's successful in their own right. That's home, and they doing, you know, they doing the right things in life. And um, we actually dispelling that myth that you know the, the recidivism rate is so high. So. You know, those men and women and those women like yourselves are overlooked. So, you know, the first thing they hear is you formerly incarcerated. They, you know, first thing they think is, oh, yeah, she, well, she back and forth to prison. You know, um, you know they, what, they, what they have to offer to society. So I'm, m- my objective for this, this uh, platform that I've created is to actually highlight, you know, those women as yourselves, you know, as those men that's formerly incarcerated and showing and uh, showing society, showing the youth, you know, showing uh, uh, our communities, you know, um, that you can be successful out of one's, you know, shortcomings, you know, short downfalls. I don't say we made a mistake. You know, it was a choice we made, whether we was younger, you know, younger or older, but these were choices that we made and, and we lived with them and, you know, what do you do from there on? You know, do you stay in that that mindset, or do you grow and develop? So, you know, this is what this platform was created for, and I'm so honored, you know, to be with you, you three women. I I spoke to y'all all through text or email, but um, I'm I'm just honored to have the chance to be able to sit here and speak to y'all and to actually hear your stories, because a lot of times too, you know, you know, in this 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 society. You know, the women are overlooked, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I'm here to actually make sure that platform is here for y'all, you know, as well as us. And so um, I'm going to start by actually, you know, um, trying to remember who's who right here. I so can do that. I can do that. <laughs> yes, yeah, we, got, we got the beautiful Rosa. Yes, coach. And Jennifer, the troublemaker. No, I'm just playing. Um, Lady, I'm go down the road. Actually, introduce yourself. How much time you did? Um, what made you transition your life? At what point? And to what is it that you're doing today? Um, that you don't have to wake up worrying about going back to jail tomorrow mm-hmm. or the prison. Mm-hmm. And thank you for the education that you gave me before the um, cameras and the podcast came on on the proper grammar to use at how we identify ourselves. Mm-hmm. Correct. So let's start with the lovely Rosa. Hello, um, I'm Rosa, and this actually is my month of anniversary. I've been home eight years this awesome. June. Yes. So, so, yeah. um, seven of them working here in Exodus. I did seven years mm-hmm. as well. So um, through those seven years, my transition has been basically... Um, working for my working in myself so i started here in exodus as a youth counselor Mm -hmm. slash case manager for the re-entry side Mm -hmm. Um, but when i first came home i didn't have an idea what i was gonna do i it was it was basically uh luck that brought me to Exodus, but you know, throughout all the struggles of being released, I had been home already for almost a year when I came to Exodus. So, um, and now what I do is I work in Rikers mm-hmm. as part of the EVI facilitators. Um, I'm there every day, Monday to Friday, and uh, what I always tell people is that I'm there to bring hope mm-hmm. to the uh, detainees that are there. We don't call them inmates, that's right. remember. That's, that's <laughs> and, you know, my job is, it's, uh, just today I was talking to somebody that was um, asking me, was you ever in an environment like Rikers? Because I was never in Rikers, but I was in other places. 
And I said, yes. So how do you basically deal with going in there every day and being in that atmosphere? And what I said was that I utilize certain things to empower myself to go in there with the best energy and not think about the triggers mm -hmm. from being in the unit that looks like what I, where I've been through and where, you know, where I was. And just basically keeping my energy clean. Mm -hmm. Right? Nice. And how I do that is by meditating and listening to music. On my drive to Rikers, I have my music on blast because it prepared me. Because as soon as you get to the parking lot, you're gonna, you have um, bumps yeah. that you face, right? You have to stop and, and show who you are, why you're there, and the whole nine yards every day mm -hmm. to get a pass to go inside. Mm -hmm. Then you have to pass certain checkpoints and mm -hmm. certain um, machines and other stuff, right? <laughs> um, they call me the queen of clear bags because now <laughs> I, I find clear bags because I need to be comfortable in, in as well like I need to have my keys here it's some uh, my car keys if something pops up in the unit I have to leave at least I could go home mm -hmm. so it's basically preparing myself for the environment and I'm not gonna say that it's been a success it's been a lot of uh, a lot of setbacks but I take passion in what I do because giving back and helping um, people like me, it's what keeps me going. So I would say that that's my success, just helping um, sisters and brothers that went through what I went, you know, and letting them see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It could be them, you just got to work on trying to change the light bulb, to make it brighter. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've been, we've been hearing that word all day today, hope. Yeah. Right? Sure. I think hope is the key to really success. Mm -hmm. right? The minute that we lose hope, that means it's just the game over. Right? And no matter how dark or, 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 or blemished your, your path is, that as long as you keep some hope, that's always a possibility of changing and growing some light. Um, so thank you for that because I know if it was me, I don't know how I can do it. I love to give back and I love to do service. But I always say, um, me visiting somebody in jail or working in jail is something that wasn't for me. And it's kind of ironic because I just got approved to go into the juvenile facilities in Florida mm -hmm. to go talk to the youth over there. And mm. I've been working on that like for months. And I just got approved mm -hmm. to do that. And it, it's funny how we changed from my mindset of never having to go back into jail. You know, my wife asked me all the time. If I went to prison, would you come visit me? And I kind of hesitate, and she goes, I know you won't. I'd be like, listen, but you make sure you got your money on your books, and I'll make sure all this. I don't, uh, it's traumatizing for me. Mm -hmm. right? So thank you for you know taking that step and still going in and thinking about those brothers and sisters that's in there Absolutely. that you can help. Mm -hmm. You know, Tracy. So yes. Rosa, let me ask oh, Rosa oh, a question yeah. real quick. Because um, I want to know, like, what, what inspired you? What, where, like, your growth and development, where did it come from, like, the inspiration, where, what time in your life, you know, like, they, they, we say that pivotal mm -hmm. moment, that you actually, um, you know, wanted to make that difference in your it's, own life as well as... Right, know, others. others. Um, well, I, I got arrested in 99, and I, and I went on the run for nine years. Mm. And in those nine years... It was a struggle because I basically became a ghost. And people think, you know, that, oh, she was, you, you was running, whatever, you was living life. No, I was really going through a lot of stuff because within myself, I was struggling, right? I couldn't get a job, I couldn't do anything. So I was basically doing other things. Mm -hmm. And in 2004, I'm, my, I met somebody that was my significant other, and he basically started pushing me to do different things. Because once he found out that I was, we you knew we I was on the run, he started getting like scared to lose me, like you, you know if you get arrested or whatever, whatever. So he started kind of pushing me for change, um, and I truly appreciate that to this day. Um, 
but the 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 main point was when I found myself incarcerated and I have to I had created this persona mm -hmm. to be able to survive even on the run for nine years, right? right? So I was I was really aggressive. I was really I wasn't scared of anything. Like, you know, just living life but in a, in, in, I was like a reckless, <laughs> reckless, and it's crazy because my best friend, mother, may she rest in peace, she named me the turtle because I had a created shell. a shell that was hard as a rock, mm -hmm. but she knew the inside that of me, soft. right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how I, I survived my prison time. But it was a time that I was in there, and as I found out that my daughter was struggling out here through some things that she went through. I said, I need to work on myself. I can't go home with this persona, this harsh shell, because it's not gonna help me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I started basically changing within the prison system. Like I put myself through certain things that People to this day don't understand. Like, I put myself on a schedule. I wouldn't call my daughter every day like other people would. Mm -hmm. I call my daughter once a week. I would email her every day just to check how she was doing. And the reason I was doing that was to kind of like program myself, right? To not be needy, to not be stressed. And, and, and because I couldn't do anything about what she was going through out here. I'm in there. Right. Right, and what I could do was not gonna be good. Right. So, um, I my significant other, I programmed him to send me a certain amount of money, not what he wanted, because he wanted to send me money every day, and I and I said no, this is what we're gonna do every month, because I didn't know how my struggle was gonna be out here when I came out. Right, mm -hmm. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to find a job or work at all. Mm -hmm. So I programmed myself and I said I need to start changing within myself. I started working out, reading books, and preparing myself Absolutely. for what I was going to face out here. Then when I came out here, that was the third stage, and I started working in Exodus. Um, I used to, I had a supervisor, two supervisors, that one of them was my best friend, the one that brought me to Exodus. And he told me that I needed to start being open for Criticism because I will get, mm. <laughs> you know, like, fuck that. You know, fuck <laughs> that. <on. laughs> and I started basically asking to take certain trainings that will help me on my development and my growth mm -hmm. because I had the tools, but I just didn't know how to use the tools, That's right? True. And it's crazy because I said that to Julio Medina one day that he said, How can I help you? to, you know, and I, and I told him, I said, I have the tools. I just need to learn how to utilize the tools because I'm carrying a backpack full of tools that is heavy as fuck, right. but I can't use the tools. I don't, I, I don't think, I don't have the switch to actually turn it on and say, you know what? I got this tool in my backpack. Let me get it out. Right. So yeah. to not react to certain things to, and, and little things like that. So when, when one day, um, something happened and my best friend that used to work in was my supervisor he sat down with me after work at eight o'clock at night and 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 gave it to me like the run around and gave me a whole bunch of stuff that he was seeing that i wasn't changing or i wasn't working on you know it hurt me and i cried but i said thank you because you know i wouldn't want nobody else to tell me Right, and sure. ever since that day, that's when I started basically doing my development, reading certain things and changing my whole persona, turning the switch off on the personality. Like basically, I, I the street and the and the aggressiveness stays in the streets. In here, you need to become something else. Like you need to think differently and act differently. Right, sure. and that's when my work started being more easy for me and proven mm -hmm. exactly my work started talking for itself i used to get in trouble all the time because 
as you know. <laughs> Yeah. You, 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 and we want to cut that person off instead of breaking them. Sometimes we need that for someone to tell us exactly the fucking truth about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we can wake up. But yet our mentality, the way that we focus, if you say something that I don't agree with you about, that you're telling me about myself that can help me, mm -hmm. I want to be angry with you, I want to cuss mm -hmm. you out, and I want to talk so bad about you, right? Instead of taking that, taking a step back and be like, Hmm. Maybe that's something there. See, what are, what are friends for? Right. Right. So we want to big up that friend. Yeah, that, that friend for you. We want to big no, up and, that friend. And you know what's crazy? That it's, it's um, when you're going for so long living like this, mm -hmm. and it's, it, it's a coping mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. So it becomes your norm. Mm -hmm. So how do you turn that norm off and, and bring yourself out of that right. whole persona? Right, so it's basically like you acting in front of the cameras. There's no cameras rolling, mm -hmm. right? And that's exactly what I had to go through. I had to go through a lot of different changes. Like I felt like I felt like a like a, a, a oh my god, una mariposa. What's it called? A, a butterfly, <laughs> like a butterfly that I have to basically grow. You Those colorful to wings. Yeah, you had to go from Sorry. a caterpillar to a. Marble. I had to go through a metaphor to actually become that person that I knew I could be and that was within me, right? That's so that growth and development. Exactly. Right and I, but it wasn't easy. I'm no, telling you. Not. Never it is. Never is. You know, because That's we're used right. to certain things growing up in the city or where we come from to doing something like that. And with that, you know, thank you. Like thank that person that oh, told you what he was every right. day. We're gonna pick okay. up that friend every right there. Tracy <laughs> Good evening. Tracy. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. How, How you doing, doing Tracy? It? I'm well, Let, Anthony. Uh, just real quick, tell me the, the same thing, what you're doing, where you're from, how much time you did, and what are you doing okay. now for your community, for yourself, to not make sure that you go back to okay. being a detainee? Definitely. Never, okay. never back. My name is Tracy Bow. Um, I'm a case manager for the reentry. Um, Work readiness program okay. here at Exodus Tran Transitional Community. Um, Big up to Exodus. Doing like amazing work, so I'm sorry, I got that. He took that chance on us, and I'm grateful. Um, I served 26 years in New York State Prison, um, a product of you know using crack cocaine. I came to Exodus. I've been home. This is my anniversary month as well. I came whoop, whoop. home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I came home June 6, 2017. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working for Exodus since June 1st, 2018. Ooh. Nice. So out of my five years, I've been here for four. Um, what brought me here was, of course, for me, my mandates you know, having to fulfill the mandates of, of parole. But I always wanted to, from the inception of my, my incarceration, I wanted to reach out to people. The, the people I wanted to reach out to was the youth at first. I wanted to tell my story to the youth so that no one, you know, no, no young adult would have to possibly face what I faced. I got arrested at 23, I turned 24 one week later on Rikers Island. And I know that my story is not unique. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my circumstances may be unique, but my, my, my story is not unique. So I wanted to, you know, be that voice for, as I stated, youth. Mm -hmm. But then I thought about it. There's a lot of adults who need, you know, other people who don't feel like they have them in their corner. So when I came to Exodus, I came as a, as a participant. Rosa was my case manager. Um, and I expressed my desire to want to work here. Um, I started out, I wasn't always a case manager. I started out as an office manager for the Wellness Center, which is the substance use center. I came in one day just because it's a safe place. Um, and I was stopped by one of the vice presidents and 
She said, uh, did you get my email? Did you get my voicemail? I said, no, I didn't get either. She was like, okay, well, I wanted you to interview today. You know, I asked that you come interview ready. I said, well, I'm really, really casual. Can I interview anyway? And lo and behold, I was hired. I'm grateful for that. Um, my purpose, I learned, I learned a long time ago from being on IOC what part of my purpose was. And part of my purpose is to um, advocate and assist. Can you right. tell people what ILC is? ILC yeah. is those the, that don't know. Yes, ILC is the Inmate Liaison Committee. And that is the group of women and men in the men's prison who sit down with the executive team, the warden, the depot security, the depot programs, um, and discuss how to better the quality of life for those who are incarcerated, mm -hmm. right? Um, I served on that on that body for a long time, and they weren't too happy to see me on the body, but um, <laughs> because they knew that I wasn't going to be the one to just accept a no. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I followed the directives as well as studied the directives, and you know, anything that said may, well, that that was a bargaining tool for me right. with them. Right. If it said cannot, will not. Okay, I knew I didn't have too many wins with that, but if it said may or, you know, whatever, it gave me leeway. Possibilities. Right. Yes. Possibilities. So, possibilities. Yes, and I'm, and I'm grateful for that opportunity, you know, um, because what it has done for me is it has given me not just a voice for other people, but a voice for myself. Absolutely. You know, um, I was one of those people who sat back all the time and just observed, you know. Um, in some instances in relationships, you know, you know, the the romantic relationships as well as friendships, you know, I was a doormat and I'm no longer that doormat. So when I say I kinda picked up where Rosa left off, um, you know, we have we have a we have that fire in us that, you know This sounds like some inside stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <They don't. laughs> I'm, I'm just really, I'm Tell just really why. compassionate, you know. I'm really mm -hmm. compassionate, and you're a turtle. If something, well, <laughs> I, maybe I was, maybe I am what? a turtle. I was a turtle, um, but you just can't, you know. When when something doesn't sound right or sit right with you, mm -hmm. you know, um, you speak I've up. Learned, I've, right. Exactly, I've learned to voice my opinion on it, and sometimes my opinion comes out a little rough. To our some deliveries, yeah. right? Our delivery. Our delivery comes out a little. My delivery comes out a little bit rough, <clears throat> but my you know, wife to use it's the not intentional. There you go. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And that's okay sometimes. You know and why? Because guess what, what? They got it though. They get exactly. it. But everybody doesn't <laughs> get it. <laughs> they get it, but then it also, you know, it. Okay. Everybody doesn't know how to be professional, so they act on their emotions. And I'm not intentionally trying to yeah. hurt anyone right. or uh, offend anyone. Some people interpret but because, it because Right, because they interpret it with their feelings. Yeah, their intelligence. <laughs> so, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really, really grateful to be here at Exodus. You know, um, this, this, this organization... When we talk about hope, it gives people hope as well as being able to see that light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And that's what my job does, you know, as a case manager. I'm here to assist, empower, and encourage. Beautiful. Damn. You know, I said that backwards. Damn. Assist, encourage, and empower. It's still <laughs> and, and a lot of my clients. Yeah. Yeah, they, they appreciate it. They love us. And we yes, appreciate it. We appre and, we, right, listen, and we appreciate y'all, you know. We're, I'm sorry that we've been running behind, like, on schedule and time. Mm -hmm. And I definitely want to get the troublemaker over there. Same thing real quick. We got to wrap it up. But like, we're here, you know, where you from, how much time you did. You know, how you transition, what are you doing today, you know, to keep yourself from becoming 
back. And, and what inspired you to grow yeah. up? Like grow up. No, I was gonna answer develop. all your questions only because I see you answering and I was like, nah, he can't answer me no questions. I'm trying to get one shot off the way and that's it. Get it. Um okay. Well, I'm from the Bronx. Okay. So you wanna know where yeah, I'm from, not nobody else. Okay. Troublemaker. Okay. I'm from the Bronx. Oh, he's from the Bronx too, born and raised. I was born and raised. Um my name is Jennifer Mendez. Um I served about almost five years total but I did like a three year bid and then like I kinda like broke up everything else so I did like almost five years in the um prison and Rikers and like different counties. I have over about twenty five cases, twenty three misdemeanors and two felonies. Um so what brought me to Exodus was um I felt at one point that I wasn't worth anything and I always had someone, my best friend, always vouch for me like, what do you mean? Why you don't feel like that? Like, and I used to be like, because every job I go to, I, like, I have to see myself what I am, right? And I'm a felon. And then she was like, no, you don't. And I'm like, well, that's how everybody looks at me. Yeah. I'm a felon. Um, you know, all I do is crimes. Like, my background is crazy. So when I go to try to make myself seem like I'm, I'm good enough for something better it's just like everything shuts down like i'll be like yo i'm gonna go in there and be a manager at taco bell no you can't be a manager because you got a felon so you have to be a cashier for the rest of your life so i started seeing myself in a lot of fast food restaurants and i always was like no i want to be a freaking nurse i want to do something bigger with my career not just settle for whatever they give me mm -hmm. but every time i try to get there it was always something that pushed me back which was my felonies. So um, in the midst of that, she told me, um, listen, we have a job. It's called as it is traditional. I said, okay, I'll look into it. It's a case manager. I was like, but I don't got experience. You don't have to have experience, right? You just have to have the knowledge and be able to help someone. I'm like, all right, that sounds good to me because I'm already doing that. You know, so I went in there um, just with a mind frame, hoping that nobody judged me and I'll be, I won't be looked differently. So when I went in the room and everybody was like, hi, um, this is X, Y, Z, you know, we did a lot of time. I was like, yeah, I'm in the right room. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one here That's that I have right. to feel like I have to kind of secure who I am now you feel because of what I've been through. So then that became, I got hired. Um, I started as a youth mentor. Um, I've been here since March. It became a year and a half almost. Um, now I Okay. Woo! That's right. Now I am a case manager for re entry workforce program. That's right, JBJ. Um, yes, yeah, so that, even then, elevating to that position was kind of hard because even in the youth department, nobody's seen my growth. Mm. And I had to, I, had to, I was, I, you know, all my life I felt like I had to like be grown for myself. So being in a youth department, I felt myself being a kid and also being professional as an adult to be able to happen. So I was able to give my outside as well to the kids. But nobody seen my growth upstairs. Well, a lot of people didn't. So when I finally went up there, you know, everybody was like, oh, you're hired to Jay today, right? So I Z, right? And then I started killing it. My numbers was going up. My professionalism got bigger. And then I started catching myself, like holding, like they said, having this shell be able to open it up. And I just always wanted to work with the youth. Oh. Like um, Tracy said, that was my thing, and that was my goal, just catching the youth. If I could catch one person out of 10, yep. I'm okay, right. as long as one get it. And then I started to learn as I'm in the case manager position that adults need it too, because I talk to people mm -hmm. and they'd be like, yo, thank you, thank you for that. And I'd be like, damn, this person really appreciates me, just not the kids, you know? And um, what made me like get that light is that I was a human traffic. I was a human trafficking um, victim for seven years. Oh. And um, every time I tried to leave, it was always a threat. It was always me getting beat up or anything like that outside of the box. So I was always afraid to leave that situation because of the circumstances. Um, and then when I finally decide to, after seven years, I'm like, you know what? Either I'm going to die in there or I'm not. It's either way it's going to happen because I, I was always getting beat up for everything I did, whether I sucked my teeth blinked the wrong way, said something that wasn't supposed to be appropriate, if I didn't want to get money today, if I didn't want to do anything that made me feel uncomfortable or made me feel like that, I would get beat up for it. And, you know, at this, from this day on, like, sometimes my ear, I can't really hear from one ear because 
I was in an emergency room so many times. But after seven years, I was just like, I'm out of here. I can't do this no more. Because either I'm, he's still beating me up in here anyways, right? So when I decided to leave, um, a month later, he caught up to me and almost killed me. And I had a setback. And I said, I'm, I'm free. I'm finally out that situation, whether I was almost died or not. But I'm out now. And then um, as I started with my life, I was transitioning. And my son looked at me one day, and when he see me get beat up, like he, you know, he, I came back home, I was kind of broken up. And my brother, everybody's going crazy, like, yeah, we're going to kill that nigga when we catch him. They didn't catch him, though. The police called him instead of him. But, um, and then after that, my, look, my son sat in my lap. He was seven years old. I was away from him for like five years. He sat in my lap. He said, Mom, when I get older, I'm going to kill him. I said, no, you're not. He said, yeah, I am. And then from this day on, he still talks about it. When I see him, I'm going to kill him. And I'm like, no, because mommy's in a better place now. So I just started seeing my growth, and not only for myself, but for my kids. Mm. I have two kids, and I have a three-year-old. Um, so I started seeing my growth change. I started seeing my temper calm down. I started seeing me be more patient. Mm. I started me being more understanding. Mm. And that kind of caught my attention. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm yeah. different, right? Yeah. So now, that, that and good. then, after all this, um, a DA called me. And was like, um, Jennifer, I heard you was a victim of, I'm like, how the fuck you know that? And knocked them, they actually knocked him my door right after he beat the shit out of me a month later. So I'm like, closed door right on them, the detectives. It was like, oh, we just want to talk. I don't want to talk to you. I just came out of that situation. Why would I want to talk to you about the situation? I'm not ready for it. Mm. So it was like, all right, we'll be back. Literally a year later, they came back. And they knocked him my door again. And they said, we just want to talk. I said, what do you want to talk about? They said, we just want to know, what's your life looking like? Same way I said, your success story. So I was like, listen, I don't want to snitch nobody out. I'm not here for that. But, um, you know, I just, I'm starting my new life. I'm grown. I kind of grew away from that already. At one point, I couldn't tell my story. I was embarrassed. Now I'm able to open it up. And that was because my best friend for 15 years kind of told me, the only way for you to open up is for you to be able to tell your story. Mm -hmm. If you can't mm -hmm. tell your story, that means because you're still embarrassed of yourself. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. So Sorry. I was like, yep. you're right. And I was, so the first time I was able to talk about it was with the detectives. I told my story. I was like, I don't really want to snitch on nobody, but this is my story. And the only reason why I'm telling you this story is because I want you to save other women mm -hmm. that's in my situation. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, I don't want to tell my story. Wow. So I was able to tell my story, and then a lawyer came was like, I like that. And then little they know they can't reach now and then now I have 23 misdemeanors cleared. Wow. wow. That's That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, and this is actually family and such worries. They've been helping me. I have 23 misdemeanors cleared. Um, they've been working a lot of felonies. I'm waiting for the seven years to hit. It's almost seven years on one charge. I've been released since 2005. Um, 2015, many. So, you know, it made, it made seven years already, well, almost eight years. So then, um, ever since then, I got all my, and I started seeing my change. I'm like, damn, 23 misdemeanors just in one court date. All I had to do was show my face. And the judge looked at me and was like, say your story. And I was like, damn, I'm kind of nervous. Say mm -hmm. your story. And then the wow. detective called me, like, two weeks later, this person is arrested for pimping and pandering, not just for you, but for other women in the world mm -hmm. that they took advantage of. So, you so I, was, I didn't believe wow. him. Wow. I looked it up. Wow. wow. That's what I, I looked it up and he was incarcerated. He is not sentenced yet. He's been there almost two years. Um, so it felt good. It was like, damn, you know, like how many more could y'all save women out here? Mm -hmm. So my whole just success is trying to save people, not just people that just been through what I've been through, but was able to still break through everything. Absolutely. Whether if you was, you know, a victim of whatever, whether if you was incarcerated, is learning how to break through. And now I'm a case manager. I'm working on myself every day. I work on myself. That's right. Um, but I learned a lot of patience. And because of Exodus, I always thank Julio every time I see him. I'm like, yo, you gave me the opportunity. You didn't have to, but you gave me the shot. You didn't know who I was from all the time. Right. But I'm here. And every day that I'm here, I change lives. Right. Every day. Whether it's one person, two persons, but you know what? Somebody changes. That, 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 is, that is just a, a, amazing, right? And real, real quick, you know, I heard that you went from anger, bitterness, and resentment 
and having your son have that same anger, hurt, and that mentality want to hurt because mom hurt, right? Mm -hmm. To you want to feel that way and now teaching your son to let it go, mm -hmm. right? Move on, mom's the better spot to start to love yourself, to setting yourself free because mm -hmm. that anger, that resentment can be a cancer and it can spread, mm -hmm. right? And through you, it wouldn't allow you to grow and to be the woman that you're gonna become. Mm -hmm. Continue to set your, the bar, Okay. A little higher every mm -hmm. day. Every day. And I, mean, I, always, I always tell people this, right? Don't feel like it's too late to give up because I am 31 years old right now, but I'm almost there to get my high school diploma for GD. I'm doing tests. I passed one already. I got three awesome. more to go. Woo! I just feel like I, every time somebody come up to me, be like, listen, I, I was there. I felt useful, a, a useless one time. I felt like suicidal. Sorry. I felt like, why do I belong in this world if I can't get a chance? And I always had to fight that battle for myself. Mm. And I'm here. I'm not like that anymore. I'm and gonna, I'm just. I'm gonna keep growing. Yeah. yeah. I'm real, like all yeah. you gonna grab. Thank you. And guess what? I use anger for positive things because it could be done. So I, I use it. The, I use the anger now to empower me every day to change mm -hmm. and and to grow. Right, and I even t and I even talk about this in my groups and bikers. I tell them how do we use anger for positive things, and the and you will be surprised on yeah. some of the responses that I get mm -hmm. from some of the guys there. So mm -hmm. yes, use the anger now for the positive, for your growth, for your everyday mentality right. to put it up a notch. Like when you're mm -hmm. listening to music and you put it up one notch, yeah. uh -huh. that's how you use it. I just look at it the way, way I came from and what, what am I talking about? How much I accomplished and why should I let that go? Mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's that's I just wanted to say this one thing. You know, when, when we get hired here at Exodus, Julio always reinstates with us. You know, you were handpicked. Right. You were handpicked. So I use that with the participants mm -hmm. and I tell them, you know, you might not have been handpicked by man. You were handpicked by God. God to be here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So just like we were handpicked to be here, you were handpicked to be here. So now mm -hmm. it's time to take into consideration being good to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? You, you, Absolutely. Especially with those who have been, you know, in the streets, mm -hmm. doing whatever they're doing in mm -hmm. the streets, whether it's just creating um, crime or addiction you mm -hmm. know start being Absolutely. good to yourself you were handpicked to be start being good to yourself you yes. know and and i had one client say to me you know i don't think i've ever done anything in my life that was for me hmm. wow. i said well this is where you could start right. you know and and that's what we're talking that's what we're here for mm -hmm. we're here to restore that hope right? so so just quickly before we wrap up right um because I know, you know, we have kids, you know. Uh -huh. We yeah. have children that they we know. have to get to. My son is going to But I want to I wanna, uh, just congratulate all three of y'all. And also, yeah. I just want to apologize to y'all for just a second. You know, um, I was that ex-drug dealer in the street. You know, I sold drugs from 14 to 20 years old. And, you know, I look at it and I look at the devastation that it caused my community, my mother, um, she was a dope fiend and she died from, you know, from her drug addiction. Um, and, you know, I got it now. Like, I got it at, I was just blessed because I got it at a young stage in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, to, to say that, listen, I'm a part of this, this universe, I'm a part of this society. I'm a part of this community. That's right. You know? that, like so me. I just like want to apologize to y'all, you know, just for being that product, you know, of my environment and for just being that follower. And so I'm just so honored today to, to be with y'all and to see all of our growth and development here today. This is why this was created, you know. Um, I created this, this platform here to, to show y'all successes in your own right. You know, and I think that this definitely entailed that today to show each of y'all success in y'all own right. And I plan on looking um, forward to, you know, working with y'all in the future. You know, um, success after lockdown is not just a podcast. 
we creating a series, we creating a documentary out of this. And so, nice. you know, I do look forward to um, actually bringing your story to life because your story is needed, you know, and you helping Definitely. others. All Definitely. I, 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 when you said that women get bypassed or something, it's true. Sometimes women don't want to speak up because our stories is usually of shame, hurt, mm -hmm. right? And, and so many other negative things. Um, some women, they want to go and, sh and, sh and, and shy away and hide and never talk about their conviction or where they've been and what they went through. So I'm glad that you guys are, you know, trying to talk, get us to talk about it and, right. and, and see where we are. Because, like I said, I was also in, in the drug business and that's why I went to prison, right? But that's how I used to make my living. I didn't think that there was another way. You know, I, <laughs> being a hustler, that was, that's what I did, mm -hmm. right? Because somebody taught me that. And that was what, you know, how I learned to survive and, and, and support my daughter. So just to highlight the women's, because we have a lot of stories out here that needs to be put out. That's why Success After yes. Lockdown series is yes. coming to a network. <laughs> that's, that's right. right. Y'all and your family, and, and show what you're doing. Definitely, Absolutely. come to Rikers okay. and follow me, so you can see it in my everyday shit. Let's go to Florida. There you go. Come on so, down to Florida. I just where you, know, you at? What talk. part? Two of my companies, one of them is actually called Hand Over Hand. No, oh, Palm, Palm Beach. Beach. Okay. And another one is called I was Beautiful actually Beginning. locked up in Those are women houses that I have for uh, females struggling with mental illnesses. In Florida? Uh, in Florida. You gave a car? Uh, yeah, I gave more yes. a car. Okay, if I need a job and I'm going to move to Florida, now I know who to come to. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> he got you. Um, Listen, I got you. I don't know um, if I can afford you, but yes, I got you. Hey, what do you mean? Uh, I, do, I do want to thank all our, our listeners out there um, that's listening. I want to say that we appreciate you all. We appreciate you, woman, for coming out here tonight. Representing Tracy, Jennifer. Um, you know, for, for being open and honest about where you are in your life. And if anyone out there listening, has any questions, please email us at successafterlockdown at gmail.com. They can also follow us with uh, YouTube, Spotify, Anchor. We on Facebook, Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts All right, so. Spotify, uh, Instagram. So we, mm -hmm. we taking this everywhere. And like I said, I need you on that reality series. Definitely. Because it ain't, so this is not. You act like Cardi B? <laughs> no. no. You can act like no. Jennifer. You're going to You're going to act like Jennifer. Look, be she Jennifer. No. Jennifer Thursday, is unique. Uh, you know, so with that said. Thank you for having like, us. You know, be Appreciate sharing the light, right? Because we all found our purpose in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what this is. This is our purpose. Mm -hmm. We could be doing a thousand other things, but God chose mm -hmm. us to do right. what we're doing because there's someone out there, right. whether you walk into Rikers Island, whether there's someone coming in through here that you stumble through here, mm -hmm. whether sure. there's some woman that's, that's dealing with such trauma, who's so embarrassed and so sheltered by that, that don't want to speak about it, yep. and it continues to allow it to continue to happen. It is now recently that the human trafficking it's now becoming something that they it's make aware of. Mm -hmm. When it's been going on for years. Right. Yes. Forever, right. no question. For years. And now it's starting to come to light. And it's only going to come to light when women find that strength, they voice, to, to say, talk hey, about it. Right. set and yourself free. So thank you, Mama. And you thank telling you. your story. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.